Hey, this is going to be a short tutorial, just going over how to use Payday 3 Noclip. I see in the thread there's a lot of people either getting kicked or um, either wanting a, a guide for all of the maps. So I'm just going to compile all of this together. Excuse me if this goes off the rails, I'm just winging this. So here we go. Uh, I'll have chapters on this video too. So if at any point you feel like you know enough about what I'm talking about, then just move on to the next section and keep going. I'll start off with the most important or useful skills and then work my way down. First, you're going to want to go with the Infiltrator tree. This will allow you to lockpick doors as soon as you have Rush. Then next is Hacker. You can hack people's radios, loop cameras. Then Grifter will give you Rush if you're within one meter of a civilian, and then allow you to pick up items if you're being observed. After that, put your remaining points into whatever you want to earn XP in. Just going to quickly show you how these skills are used. When you're one meter from a civilian, you'll get Rush, which allows you to pick locks instantly, and then picking a lock refreshes that. Here's a case where I had a camera outside the vault, and being able to loop it was very handy. Just note that if you are no-clipping, you won't be able to press spacebar to exit the camera. Here's a case where a guard is triggered by my sprinting. Being able to hack his radio and make him forget really does help on these runs. Some of the skills that I can think of off the top of my head that would definitely improve the times that you get on these maps would be increasing the speed that you can loot bags by 50%, and then for the likes of Road Rage, being able to tie their hands quicker would definitely help. Alright, that's the skills finished, so I'm going to go over a few things just before I jump into the guides for the maps. I might say the word server side a few times, just know that when I talk about this, this is the location that you are on the map before you start no clipping. When you release the no clip button, you'll be put back to the server side location. This is better explained with a visual aid, so I'm going to show you how to use the no clip to move your loot very quickly. So on the first map you have two spawns for the van, there's one over there in the car park, and one that I have right now. To quickly move your loot, put your server side location by walking over to the van, and then start no clipping in towards your bags. While no clipping, pick them up, and then if you were to throw an object, it would spawn it out from your server side location. So what you can do is remember the orientation from your server side location, uh, that the van is. This might be a little hard to explain just from this alone, but you'll see that I'm throwing them in the back of the van. So to better explain it, I'll fly over here and start showing you. So essentially when I'm in the vault and I'm looking that direction throwing the bags, the van is that way from me. So for example, if I turn around and throw the bag that way, you can see it spawns out from me. And then if I look that way, it goes into the van. So if you had it in the car park, you might have it perpendicular to that. But you'll get used to it just by messing around. Another system in place is ensuring you're doing the objectives in the correct order. So, if you're trying to experiment around and shave some time off your runs, and you notice you get kicked, just pay attention to what you have done. You'll usually get kicked when you're trying to interact with something from too far away, or if you're trying to complete an objective without doing something prior. Here's a run where I try to go directly to the vault without picking the lock on the right, which kicks me immediately. Another thing that can cause kicks is trying to interact with things from too far away. So here's an example of me on Road Rage no clipping down the bridge to pick up this cache, which pretty much kicks me instantly. But if I start no clipping from a couple meters away and pick up the cache, it's no problem. Right, now that that's all out of the way, we can jump into the guides for the maps. Uh, just note that these guides won't be world record runs or be helping you set a new PB or anything like that. I'm going to show you how to do them correctly. And then if you're willing to experiment and mess around, you can figure out a way to shave off some time. Make sure to chuck on the lightest armor that you can, just so you can move around quicker. So I'm going to go through these chronologically. The first one is No Rest for the Wicked. We're going to be doing all these on Overkill and trying to stealth them. Alright, so the first objective is to enter the bank. So just run inside the bank. Once you get inside, turn around, head back outside and crouch in this little spot here. Start no clipping, and while no clipping, unlock this door. It helps to have rush. Then once inside the vault, press the button to open the door, and then let go of the no clip button to go back outside. After this, make your way back inside. I have two cameras here on mine, so I'm going to start hacking the one on the inside and loop it. Once this is done, I can make my way inside the vault. And now my server side position is inside the vault. One handy thing you can do is no clip behind this wall and check the contents of the deposit boxes. Once you've found the file, you can actually no-clip inside it. The no-clip movement is kind of annoying. I did see the developer say that he was contemplating adding a curve to the movement speed, so it took a couple seconds to actually reach the max speed, so you're not having this jittery, you know, zipping around. We'll have to see if he does release that, and if it does, then this definitely would be a quicker option, but 
if you're finding that it's very annoying, just look and see what ones the money are in. Your server side location's right there, so you can just pick the locks. Once you've gathered up the money bags and the file from the inside of the deposit boxes, you can start unlocking this room here. Pay attention to when you do get the door open though, there will be a timer that will start ticking down and these little packs inside the money bags will burst, making them worth less money. But if you're not doing this for money, you're just doing this for challenges, who cares? Right, now it's time to start packing up your money. You can just throw it wherever, it really doesn't matter where it goes. Once you've bagged up all the cash, start walking back out to the van to place your server site location at the back of the van and then no clip back inside. If your van is in the other location, you will need to aim a different bearing and throw the bags, just like we talked about earlier. But yep, you can see me throwing them in the back of the van now and the progress is going up in the top left. Just repeat this until you've got all the bags in and then let go of no clip. And there you go, you can see I got all the bags and got some challenge progress. Road Rage next. This is not a stealth, so bring the best armor that you possibly can. You're gonna need it. I've managed to get this run down to about 4 minutes and 14 seconds. And I think I owe it mainly to getting lucky on the extract point. Okay, so pick up the EMP and make your way down the bridge. Start tying up as much civilians as you can. Alright, so once you're done there, activate your EMP. You'll have about, yeah, 30 to 45 seconds before the truck arrives to the EMP. So make your way down the bridge here. So once you hit this spot here, you can actually no-clip under the bridge, and the van would be here, but because I've already started the uh, ambush, it's now making its way down the bridge, and the loot is here. Once it gets to the ramp, that all that loot down there will be moved up inside the vehicle. Alright, so once I'm down here, I'm targeting the rare materials and just dropping them at my feet up on the bridge. Uh, once you get one bag, it should start the getaway. Once you see the flare uh, or the prompt to trigger the getaway, go back up and trigger it as soon as possible. This will ensure that you can get out very quickly. And then if you want, you can go back down and get the rest of the money. So in a second now, the announcer or whatever you want to call her, the intel woman, will now tell you what side they're coming in on. So pay attention to that and you can remember the location. So the south side of the bridge, this is this location here. Uh, luckily enough, I had the bikes pretty much right beside it. Now the police assault will start, and then you're just left to defend yourself until the getaway arrives. I would recommend sticking in one of these areas over here, as you're not facing the full might of all this coming out at once. One thing I will say is look out for the snipers though, they really will hurt. And if you could put an armor bag on or something that will prolong your survivability, then yeah, go for it. You could also use favors to call in uh, medic bags or armor bags. I also read someone saying that there's a favor for this mission that you can get, and it's a money balloon. And what you could do is no clip below, grab all the bags of money and put it in the balloon, and trigger the getaway. So there you go. That's the heist done. Should get some achievements, and there it is in 411. On to Dirty Ice next. Uh, this one's actually really annoying. Uh, it took me a good few tries to get this down. Uh, so just make sure you're following what I do, and I'll point out the things that you can't do along the way. So at the beginning, I just run into the front of the shop. This is actually not even needed, because you're going to sneak in the back anyway, so don't worry about that. Just keep going where I'm going. So we head to the loot van. There's a guard that will be posted up in the alleyway, and he'll patrol around. 
and then there's always a civilian there. The civilian's pretty annoying, because if you want to throw the loot directly into the back of the van, it can catch you sometimes. Once you're hidden behind the van, start flying around and looking for phones. There's a couple spots that they can spawn, so there's one here, one by that car in the alleyway, and you're allowed to scan these while no clipping. Basically, you'll be getting these to open up the back door and the VIP room. So there's another spawn there, another spawn on the manager's desk. And if you don't get any there, you're really unlucky and check the cafeteria or staff room, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so yeah, you can unlock these, just don't interact with the doors whatsoever. Same goes for this gate in the alley here. Don't interact with that while you're no clipping, Look it'll kick you. Guard. So now you've unlocked the two doors, make your way past that civilian. It should give you rush if you followed my build at the beginning, which will allow you to unlock that gate first try. What? So now we're going to sneak inside, and what we want to do is open the door for the VIP showroom and step our toes inside to get rid of the optional objective. Once that's done, make your way back to the manager's office. And then what you want to do is stand on this carpet to disable the case alarm. If you disable the case alarm from too far away, it will immediately kick you. Then once you've done that, you need to come over here and stand on roughly about this carpet. You can put this monitor between you and the door if you're paranoid about someone coming in that way. But typically I found that the guard patrols through the door that you're closest to and then walks to that door. Now that you're in position, you can unlock the locks on the display cases inside the VIP room without getting kicked. Once they're unlocked, just open them and head out towards the windows in the back, and then you can unlock them while no clipping. Once you get the windows open, your escape route is sorted. One thing I will say about the windows though, if you have not came inside and actually completed the objective that is casing the jewelry store, and you try to unlock those windows, you will try to cut them open. There's a guard. And then while you're still no clipping around, mark the guards in the hallway and the alleyway behind. It is very handy to use the no clip as a free cam to just spot some guards around the corner so you know what's going on. As you can see, the guard just walks right in the room and doesn't even care that I'm in here, so this is a good spot to sit. Right, now I can see the guard in the alleyway moving, so I'm going to make my way outside. Civilian. Avoid this if you can, it just adds time onto your run. If not, it's no big deal, you just get walked out. To be honest, I should have hacked his radio at this point and just walked away from him. The guards would be set to searching and that's it. Once I got escorted out, I just hid behind the van. At this point, you can loot everything that you've opened in the VIP room, and then you can loot everything in the front and in the main vault. Just whatever you do, don't start lockpicking anything from the VIP room. I'm pretty sure you have to be inside the manager's office to be within range to interact with that stuff. Right, at this point there's nothing left to do other than grab all the loot via no clip, so I'm just gonna speed this up. So there it is, done at 6.42, which you can 100% shave down. Just don't get caught by the guard in the back alley. And then you can use this method of throwing the bags to speed it up a little uh, by leaving your server side location at the back of the van and then navigate inside, pick up the bag, and then look at the back wall and throw it. Right, so next is Rock the Cradle. This heist I have a lot of familiarity with. I've probably done this the most legitimately with uh, Unmasked solo stuff. Right, to start it off, you're going to want to sprint past this group of civilians here to get Rush, and then head to the door around the right. This run is relying on your lockpick skills quite a lot, so you want to keep the Rush going. If you have the light armor on, you can sprint through these cameras pretty much no problem. Do feel free to slow down and take your time with the cameras like I did there, I waited for the rotation. Alright, so next you're going to want to have this camera on loop because you will be standing here for a couple minutes while you do things. Opening this vent isn't necessary. 
And then you're going to want to make sure you're standing directly in this corner here so you can grab the keycard without getting kicked. I step out of the room to trigger the objective, but honestly at this point you should use the keycard on the door. It's slow to open. Either way, if you choose to open the keycard there or not, it doesn't matter. Next, you'll head up to the speakers and start messing with those, and this will get the bouncers to move away from the doors. Once that's done, you could just continue no clipping from the speakers down to the DJ booth. I let go uh, too early, but it doesn't matter. Alright, now with the music messed with, all the guards will start moving around. Uh, but bear in mind, the bartender will come in here, which is why I had you stand back here. So here you'll see I pay the price for not actually having the keycard open sooner. It does take a while, and then yeah, because of the music, the guards are patrolling. This will just save some time. Right, as you get in, you're going to want to hack these cameras going down the stairs. I got ridiculously unlucky here. This shouldn't happen to you. The lead guard does start to make his way to the basement once you've opened the door, but you shouldn't get as unlucky as I did. Thankfully, he turns around and just walks out. I don't know if I messed with his loop. Was he supposed to go down into the basement? I don't know, but just continue on and get the next camera. Watch the camera. Thank you. Now that you're down here, you're going to want to open this door using the keycard. Alright, once your server side location's in there, you're going to want to look around using no clip to find the IT room. There will be a whiteboard in the IT room that will have the switch you need to flip. So I found it now, and I can see that the switch I need to flip is A400 blue. So just come back to your server side location and flip that switch. Okay. Once you flip that switch, you can no clip over just to trigger the hack, because there is a couple seconds to the next prompt, and I use that to open this vent. Alright, next you're going to want to be within 20 meters to actually interact with this without getting kicked. Once you do that, you'll be given the location of the crypto wallet. You can also no clip towards that and pick that up. As soon as you pick up the crypto wallet, you'll be shown the spot to dump the loot in. Uh, you could get it directly below you here, and you could just make your way down, and then throw it in, go up through the accountant's office, jump over the balcony, and come back this way. I have a mod that allows you to vault over stuff without putting your mask on, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to abuse that. Right, so I got the loot spot on the other side, which is arguably the harder one. So, come back through here, just be careful of the camera at the bottom of the stairs if you have moved your loot to something else. And then make sure no one sees you while using this keycard. So I feel like from this point onwards, once you've secured the crypto wallet, this is kind of on you if you know a quicker route or you have a better way to get around or you have perks that allow you to do a lot more than go for it. I do have a mod that removes fall damage, so I don't know if that actually would have killed you there. I presume not. I played this legit without the mods before and that fall has barely taken off health from me, so you should be okay. Um, and then, yeah, as I said earlier, I was very much so contemplating just using the mod to vault here, but for the sake of Ready, making one. sure that you guys could do it without the mod, I put on the mask and just made sure to try. At this point, there's nothing left to really do other than just leave the heist, so I'm going to speed the footage up here so you don't have to watch me sneaking around. While editing this and standing here by this guard, I notice you can actually hop up on the boxes to get on top of the train that he's standing beside, and that will save a lot more time than going through the accountant's office. If you are going this way, just be very careful when you walk along this catwalk. It doesn't vault you automatically onto the vent, so you might fall. Keep an eye out for civvies that could be smoking on these balconies. They will spot you, especially if you have your mask on at this stage. So at this point, I'd remove the loop from the camera to the left. You could just reloop it or just sneak past like I did there. There you have it. I think I got this done in about 5, yeah, 5.52, so you can definitely shave time. Next is under the surface. This map is not cheesable via Noclip. You're basically just using Noclip to help you stealth this. So due to this, I won't be able to show you how to get it consistently done. I can just show you a couple pointers that really do help. This really sucks. I've tried to abuse this level as much as I can, but no matter what, you have to legitimately sneak around and disable the bars that are on all of the display cases. Okay, now that that's been said, I'm going to show you the route that I used to get into the building. 
This is pretty consistent because no matter what the guard layout is, I found you can still get into the building and have the cameras disabled within the first minute. After you run this a couple times, you'll get very familiar with the route that you can take with the guard standing in certain locations. So what I like to do is get rush and head towards this gate that I'm lockpicking in the top left right now. You'll see in the top right that I did spawn right beside it, which is kind of handy. Use rush to lockpick the gate and run past the guards in the courtyard. I left getting caught in the top left just to show you that you can hack the radio and get in within a decent time. Once you get the door open, chuck your mask on, head over to this counter, vault over it, and go inside this door. Your rush should refresh when you open the gate, the front door, and this door. You can then no clip, look around for the security room, and use the rush that you got to open that door. Make sure you lockpick the door and open it before you shoot him, because otherwise the cameras will not deactivate it. If you see a phone on a table or a desk after you've shot him, do scan it, because it takes about the same time to scan the phone for the radio to pop up. On occasion, trying to lockpick yeah, the security door will kick me. I'm yet to figure out if this is distance-based or if I'm doing so it too soon in the heist. The layout of the map changes randomly each time, so I couldn't quite figure out if it was distance-based or if I was just being too quick. It didn't happen enough for me to be able to figure out what was causing it. So you should be fine. Alright, once cameras are down, you can use no clip to fly around and find the panel on the first floor, which will deactivate the security bars. You can interact with the panel via no clip, which will spawn three circles on the ground, but you cannot no clip inside those circles and gain any progress on them. You can leave your server side position inside it and start no clipping around and it'll still make progress. This is handy for if you want to spot guards that are nearby. You can also interact with vents while no clipping and unlock these QR locks. Just don't interact with the doors that will kick you. Also be careful with that back door. Don't unlock that while no clipping from far away. A good rule of thumb is to fly around and locate phones while you're waiting for a guard to rotate. These phones are very handy as you can use them to open up showrooms where guards don't patrol in and you can use those to either hide in, no clip out, mark a guard and just wait for him to move and then you can hit the circle that you need to hit. You can also disable the security systems in those rooms with no clip so don't worry about those. You want to do what you can to shave off any time from this heist, because it did take me about 18 minutes on this run. Bear in mind, I know you can shave time off it. This was after about 3 hours of trying and failing to get this done, so I had to take my time and be cautious where I could, just to get the run finished. So you'll see me putting myself within a circle and flying around with no clip, just to spot the guards that are closest to me and would be a potential threat. This helps just manage what can happen. I've lost so many runs progress just by a guard walking right around the corner that I could have spotted and had marked with no clip. Another thing that I'll show you right now is that you can actually kill guards while no clipping. Your bullets will come out wherever you're aiming while no clipping. So make sure to have your server side location in a place where you can hide the body, shoot him, pick up the body immediately, then return to your server side position and answer the radio, and then drop the body. Just make sure that this is actually a decent spot to hide a body and not inside a staircase behind a vent. Because the lead guard will go and look at those sometimes. I would recommend removing a guard off of the first floor, because there's two civilians on the upper floor that I can show you how to get rid of later with a bit of a cheese. Alright, for now at this point I don't really have any more tips to give you about sneaking around that I can think of. Um, so I'm just going to speed up this footage here until I get the bars disabled on the first floor and then I'll continue. Right, now that that's out of the way, I'm going to show you the cheese to get rid of the two civilians. So, I've tried this in multiple locations, and it has just froze my game sometimes. So, I go up to the roof because it's a nice open area, and you won't glitch inside any terrain. Just like being able to shoot the guards while no clipping, you can actually take hostages while no clipping. But it can be a little weird, and it might lunge you forward, I think, because of the animation itself. So, I like to stand in that spot there on the roof. So, you can no clip through the floor, look for a manager or the cleaner, take human shield... Let go of no clip, and then you'll be brought with the human shield to the roof again. So yeah, just repeat that again for the cleaner. Uh, you'll find him roaming around. I did a terrible job at locating him quickly here, so you can definitely shave off some time here. 
Once you find him, just repeat what you did for the manager, bring him up to the roof and tie him. That basically just gets rid of two civvies that can roam around. So I'm going to speed up the footage again. This is just because I'm wandering around aimlessly looking for this cleaner. And then after he's dealt with, I have to walk around and stand in those circles anyway. I like to come down off the roof this way and just hop in the window, but just make sure to no clip inside and that you're actually safe to do so. So here I hide in the security room. There's another three rooms you can use that are like this. The manager's office, the break room, and the server room. And then to add to those, I open up E4 here, which is a great way to get to this little elbow here by the manager's office. Just make sure you fly in, disable the security system on the inside of the room. Uh, you can unlock the lock, but just don't open the door. Here's a case where I had a circle right beside a room. Just unlock the room. This will give you a safe spot to retreat to if a guard does come around the corner. So the order I like to do everything in, get inside the building, disable cameras, disable first floor bars, disable second floor bars, and then find the manager's office. I basically like to do the least amount of work possible until the security bars are disabled. That way, if you get caught, you don't lose extra work. Right, with the bars disabled, I make my way to this painting first. It actually doesn't really matter which order you do them in, although I would recommend being upstairs and then grabbing the stuff from downstairs. This is because you don't actually need to be server side downstairs for anything, but you do, however, need to be close enough to place the USB, otherwise you will be kicked. This will be done inside the showrooms E4 and E7. Next, we head to the manager's office to get the USB. There's no way to use no clip to cheese this. I've tried to fly inside the safe, but it isn't actually initialized until the safe is unlocked. Right, so at this point I have E4 and E7 open, which technically are the rooms you would use the USB in, but you don't need to discern if it's authentic or not. You can just take one of them. It only increases your pay. So for sakes of getting this mission done quicker, just whatever's closer. So I'm grabbing the USB from the manager's office and then I'm gonna bring it into E4. Another handy thing that I do here, so I figured out the route that I need to go, is you can actually just ping with middle mouse while no clipping, and then you can see roughly how far you have to travel or where you'd have to travel to from your server side location. Right, so this next step that I'm doing isn't needed. This is just to show you that you can actually finish the mission without the authentic paintings. So I'm going to cut this display glass here and then put down the scanner and show you if it's authentic or not. Right, so at this point, we've secured either one of the paintings from E4 and E7. We've taken the painting from E1. Now all we have left is E3 and E6, if I'm not mistaken. So I find my bag that I have stashed here is actually kind of exposed, and I'm a little worried about it. So just for safety, it's best to have your bag stored inside one of these exhibition rooms. Guards will never come in here. So in the footage here, I've actually been panicking for the past couple of minutes. Uh, this definitely increased the amount of time I spent in here. I was just really worried about doing something without thinking about it too much and losing all my progress because I've been at this stage a few times before. So yeah, the fact that I'm wasting time here to check if the paintings have the real blood on it is just pointless. Just grab any random two. So this is the final stretch now. You've got all the paintings. You just need to get to the van. I've gotten caught numerous times doing this, so do take your time on this one. If there's a guard at that back door there, he should rotate away after a while. If not, you can use your note clip, fly over towards him, hack his radio, and then use that window to get out of the building. And I'm not talking about physical window, I'm talking about a window of time. Don't bother wasting your time trying to physically move a bag across the back. It makes you more visible, if I'm not mistaken, and you move a lot slower. So just get out of the building and get across. If you have ECM jammers, honestly, they might help you at this stage. I don't want to use any equipment or any extra stuff that people might not have available to them at the very beginning of the game. So that's why these guides are staying the way they are. 
I cannot stress how important it is to use no clip to make sure that it is safe to walk out before you do. And that's it, pretty much just make it to your van, and then once you're there, you can grab all the loot you've hidden. It doesn't matter where it is, it could be further away, you should be able to still get it. So there it is, done in 18 minutes, 11 seconds, which you can 100% shave time off of. Now it's Golden Shark. This one's way better than under the surface. You can use no clip to actually cheese a few things. The first step is to get the red keycard. It can be in two spots, so just check if there's a manager in this office here. If not, it'll be in the other office. If it's in the first office, you can just stand outside and then no clip inside and search it. If not, you'll have to come over here and find a phone to unlock the door. If you're too far away from the red keycard when you pick it up, it will kick you, so that's the reason why you have to get the phone. Once you've got the door unlocked, make your way down the hallway to the right. Sometimes there's a camera there, so just be careful. So if you can get rushed before coming in here, I'll definitely speed this up. Alright, now that you've got that unlocked, you can hide over here and then they'll clip into the office and search for the red keycard. Once you've found the keycard, grab it and make your way towards the gate to open it. Once you have the gate open, just make sure you touch off this door here before you continue upstairs any further. Next, you'll be making your way to the server room. I found on all my overkill runs, it's in this exact same spot, but it could move, I'm not too sure. Once you find the server room, open the door and take a step inside to complete the objective, and then make sure you're hiding outside just so that you're in a private area and not a secure area. Don't worry about civilians seeing the hack, I've never had them trip an alarm from it. Once the hack is running, you're going to want to look for the IT department. One spawn is here, and then the other spawn is over here. You can tell by the plaques that are outside. Once you've found the IT room, just wait inside and wait for the hack to reach the percentage, and then it will prompt you to activate one of the computers in here. When it prompts you to interact with it, do, and then just wait here for another couple seconds. Once it's finished, you'll be asked to interact with the computer again, then you can let go of no clip, and then interact with the server room hack. The next step is to get the blue keycard. A manager would be walking around with this. Now be very careful when you're picking this up, if you're too far away, it will kick you from the server, so just either make sure you're close or wait for him to pass you. Now when I get the blue keycard, I just like to open both of these, just in case, because uh, the guards can patrol around upstairs, and you'll have to come back to the office later. When the hack is finished, it will show you four sets of four digit pins. No clip over to the keypad, check which numbers it can be made up of, and then come back and make a mental note of what it can be. Whatever you do, don't enter the pin code in via no clip. You actually have to walk over there and do it manually. Once the pin has been entered, you can open the door and then make your way inside the vault and hide over here. It's a good spot and you won't be spotted by cameras or guards. Next, interact with the panel on the wall via no clip. You'll see what colored switch you'll have to flip next. There's one of these switches in the room with the vault and then the others are in all four corners of the upstairs. So each time, make a note of what color it is, fly around, find the switchboard, flick it, let go of no clip, come back, check it, and then proceed to the next one. Deactivate the lasers, and then you're going to want to make your way to the manager's office, which is the two doors we opened earlier with the blue key card. You can't do this via no clip because there's an objective you need to do before you can actually hack his computer. It's probably wise to check where the guards are on the second floor before actually sprinting across to here. Interact with the computer and then it will prompt you a second time. Once you interact with it a second time, you can do all these next steps via no clip. Head inside the vault, scan the blue keycard and spin the wheel to open up the door. So don't worry about this vault actually being open. There is a guard that roams around in here, but if he spots it, the worst that will happen is the guards will start searching. 
Once that's done, make your way down to this public bathroom here. It's actually a handy spot to transport loot. No one ever goes in here. So once you're in there, just close the door behind you and then no clip all the way into the vault. And this is where you start picking up all the money and just dropping it at your feet the minute you pick it up. So here I find the server, just make sure to look for it. There is three spawns it can be in, in each of those rooms. The bathroom's handy because it's a cubicle, so no matter what direction you're looking in when you throw it, it'll just be right at your feet. I mess up by giving the bots the bags here. This is actually something that just wastes time in the end. Now that you've got all the loot out of the vault and in the toilet, head down to the garage where the van is. There should be two cameras down here and two guards. So try ping the two guards if you can and distinguish which guard actually heads into the back room and which one stays out in the car park. Next, you've just got to wait for the guard to rotate out of the way so you can make your way inside. If this civilian is over on this left side where my spot is, uh, just come over and take them hostage and hide them behind the red car. I don't know if the cars change, but you should be able to hide the body back here, no problem. So at this stage, uh, because I have the civilian here, I need to mask up and get them out of the way. If you didn't have to mask up to move the civilian, you would mask up now anyway to go and get rid of the camera operator. You can kill him via no clip and answer his radio. Now that the cameras are down, you can take out this guard over here. It would probably be wiser to check where the other guard on rotation is, but I just take out this one via no clip, pick up his body, and then answer his pager behind the red car. Now the last thing to do is get rid of this one civilian that's over here taking pictures of the van. So I just run over and quickly take him as a human shield and move him over to the red car. So next I'll move over to this green bin here and move the loot down. I find it easier to move the loot from the bin to the van because you can keep the guard that you've marked in your peripheral. It's just a bit risky trying to throw the money from the toilet into the back of the van because you can't see this guard at the same time. Once you're comfortable with the way he's rotated, get your server side position at the back of the van and then throw all the loot in. If you don't make the same mistake that I did with putting all the bags on the back of the bots, you don't have to worry about picking them up and you can just get out. And there you go, that's Golden Shark with every bag on Overkill. And yeah, roughly about 11 minutes. You can definitely shave time off that. Alrighty, 99 boxes now. So this one's actually really easy compared to all the prior ones. You can get this one done in about a minute. Less if you knew the layout, but there's really no point in scouting it out. So when you spawn in, I don't know if you spawn here every time, but make your way to this side of the building that has the Roger Wilson sign on it, and start making your way to this truck. This is the refrigerated truck you would use. Go to this corner and look for this sticker before you start no clipping. That's how you know you're in the right spot. So there is two courtyards that will have the containers in them. This container I've already scouted out, but you can see there's about five containers on that side there. None of them have the refrigerated material in it, but you would just basically poke your head in and see if it was in there. All right, so I move on to the next courtyard. Uh, I checked this container just to show you what a cash one looks like, and this is what one with the material in it would look like. Once you pick it up, let go of no clip and throw it into this corner here and it should go inside the truck. Now you just need to search for the second material and repeat the same thing. You'll have over a million dollars for completing this, and it is definitely the easiest and quickest heist. Once you have the bag, throw it in the back of the truck, no clip inside, and interact with the door. You might have to open it before you can close it, or sometimes you can just interact with it once and then you're free to escape. So there you have it, 99 boxes done in 1 minute, 10 seconds, and with 1 million. Last but not least is Touch the Sky. This one's actually another pretty fun and easy one to get done. You can keep your mask off and get it done in under two minutes. So right off the bat when you spawn you'll have the loot location right behind you in that elevator. Tuck yourself into the staircase and start no clipping to this bedroom here. Go through this wall and you'll have the safe with the SSD inside. 
If you no clip around, you can get it to the point where you're able to pick it up. And the reason why we're in the staircase at the beginning is to make sure the guard is not looking at us when we pick it up. Once you finally manage to pick it up, you're going to head back to the office and plug that SSD in. This is probably the thing that takes the longest time in this mission, so get that done as soon as possible. Now while that countdown's actually happening, you can come into these rooms and pick up the money bags and the cocaine if you want. You don't have to do this because you just need the SSD to escape. If you don't want to waste time, you could bag the loot that is in this room because picking up bagged loot is way quicker than actually bagging the loot the first time. So while you're waiting, if you want to save some time, you could bag these up and come back for them later. But just in general, in terms of saving time, I wouldn't bother with this stuff as it probably doesn't even give that much of a pay. It takes exactly a minute from when you place the SSD to start decrypting it. Once you've got the SSD, just head back towards the elevator and that's you finished. And there you have it, touch the sky done in under two minutes.